Open up to Judges chapter 6. They're going to put it up on the screen. And I really felt like the Lord wanted me to teach out of this because the enemy really tried to steal. There was a spirit of robbery over uh, Gideon. And Gideon went through some hard times, but I think so many of us can really relate to uh, what, what happened with Gideon. All right? So I'm going to read, if I can only find it in my Bible, um, from Judges chapter 6. It says here, But the Israelites did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord gave them into the hand of Midian for seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. Because of Midian, the Israelites made themselves the dens, which are in the mountain, in the caves, in the strongholds. And I wrote here for myself, or you can say they isolated themselves. This is not a time to isolate. If you're isolating, stop it. Come out of isolation. For whenever Israel has sown their seed, the Midianites and the Amalekites and the people of the east came up against them. It's like whenever you're trying to get ahead, it's like all hell breaks loose and everything hits the fan and comes from this way and that way. And it's like it doesn't end, right? And so that's what happened here. The Midianites, the Amalekites, the people of the east came against them. So thought, and you know, basically it was like, you're not moving ahead. And so they would encamp against them and destroy the crops as far as Gaza and leave no nourishment for Israel and no ox or sheep or donkey. For they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came like locusts for multitudes. Both they and their camels could not be counted, so they wasted the land as they entered it. And it says, And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the Israelites cried out to God. Now, that word cried out means to make procl you know, proclamations and basically like help. You know, they were crying out to God. But Gideon, you know, like when you think about Gideon, robbers have stolen in the past and God is reordering. Just like the enemy has stolen from us in so many areas, but God is reordering our steps, right? And he's recovering and he's delivering. That's what, that's what this whole thing is about. And so what, there's been, what has the enemy stolen from you? It's not just money. Has he stolen your family? Has he stolen your health? Has he stolen your intimacy with God? Has he stolen your belief? Are you in unbelief? What has he stolen? Have you pulled back to where you go through the motions, you go to church, but your heart's not really open to receive from the Lord because of circumstances? See, that's the thing that we all have to check because we don't want any of these things to rob from us because we have that open door or we have a hardened heart, right? So the, what does the Bible say in John 10, 10? But the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He says, but I've come to what? Give you an abundant life. Well, I remember when I used to hear the preacher always say that. I thought, well, I'm not living an abundant life. How do I get an abundant life? You know, you get saved, but then you have all these circumstances happen in your life. Well, how do I get that? Right? And so... Uh, it's, it, you know, it's simple. The gospel is simple. It's through our intimacy with the Lord. But then we need to be accountable to people. But then there's stuff that gets all clogged up in our hearts that we need freedom from. Yes. And that's key. That, that was a turning point. You know, understanding the Father's love, but also then getting my own healing. And we do our spring cleaning. We call it our spring cleaning at least once a year. We come in for our, you know, us Italian people. We get our spring cleaning going on. So the enemy was trying to steal his inheritance, his destiny. See, when, when we go through stuff and, and things hinder us and, and basically pushes us back, that's his goal. He can care less if you're going to church. He can care less if you're going in church 15 times a week. He doesn't want you walking in the destiny and the purposes that God has for you or me. And so we have to take back what the enemy has stolen. So reading um, where it says here, that the um, enemy had stolen their seed, right? He stole their inheritance. They were, it said that they were greatly impoverished. And that word means to be oppressed and to be weak and to be disappointed. How many have had that through this year? To dangle. The Midian, when you see, it says here in the beginning that the Midians, Midianites and the Amalekites came against them. That word Midian means strife or contending, brawling, quarrel, and, and symbolically it's an, it's an illustration of compromise, okay, with the world and strife that results. Has there been a war, a tug of war in your heart between you and the Lord? Has there been struggle of, of brawling and contention, of anger? So there's that, that spirit, that Midianite spirit, then the Amalekites, they were descendants of Saul. I mean, I'm sorry, not Saul, Esau. 
and, and it represents the flesh, but it, there was no fear of God. They were evil. And they were, the Amalekites were really arrogant and high-minded. You know, you have that fear of man thing that goes on. That, that religious spirit, that fear of man tries to intimidate you, make you feel so insignificant. See, that, that, that thing that, and, and so what happens is it stops, that, stops the cycle of you moving on. Because you feel like, oh, Lord, you know, I can't ever attain that. Or that's only for those, that group of people. I'm always going to have problems in my life. You know, that's a bunch of baloney. So, so here, oh, and the other thing it meant, spiritual blindness and, and doubt, faint, weary, and attack. See, when you start walking with that unbelief, it causes spiritual blindness. We're not discerning. We're not seeing. We heard the song, you know, wake up. You know, in, the, in, the, in Romans it says, wake up, O sleeper. Wake up to the truth of the word of the Lord. It's not God's plan for you to live in defeat. We are not a defeated people. The Bible says we're more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us, right? And so in Judges uh, 6, uh, 7, and 10, it says, And then when they cried to the Lord because of Midian, the Lord sent a prophet. We have prophets all the time. The Lord sent a prophet to the Israelites because the prophetic word breaks things open. It gives you revelation. It says, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I brought you up out of the house of Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. We're not going back into bondage. We're not people of bondage. We're people of victory. You may have your, 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 your circumstances that might like, slow you up or delay you, but that's also a plan of the enemy. But it's also sometimes it's our stupidity, some of the stuff that we do, but the mercy mercy of God is there for us. And so, listen, we can't, we can't cry over spilt milk, but we can move forward, you know. And, you know, what's the saying? When you're going through hell, don't stop. Keep on going. Listen, God's saying, listen, no matter where you're at, I am there to help you. I am there to help you get out of any situation that you're in. Or you may not be in a situation. You may just feel stagnant. See, the breath of God wants to breathe on you. His breath wants to awaken us and say, don't settle. And we can't move into the future thinking about the old and how it used to be. It's like, God, I want to walk in the revelation that you have for me. I want my heart open, and I want to hear what you're saying. That when, when you're moving in a way, I don't want to get all religious, and I've been there, or too familiar with the things of the Lord. Oh, I've been there. I've heard that. Well, no, you haven't. Well, maybe you have, but there's a revelation that God wants to give you. It's like with that movie, Jesus Revolution, right? How many of us would have been all bent out of shape with Lonnie Frisbee, right? And so here's the thing. But now, was everything right, perfect? Absolutely not. But there was something that God was doing. And God is about to do something big, I'm telling you. But we have got to have a heart that's open and not have a heart that has a hard heart with that, that where the, when the word is coming forth, it's ricocheting off of us. So... And then it goes on to say in verse 9, And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptian and out of the hand of all who oppressed you. I delivered you. I'm not going to deliver you. You're delivered. Yes. 